Hello. We're going to talk about something that's been a mystery to me since childhood. It's about the safe feature of Sonic 3 Knuckles. Why did it stop working on some units? So first of all, why would anyone care so much about this in the first place? Stuff breaks, it's not necessarily a mystery you have to spend 20 years trying to figure out every time that happens. Well, it turned out to be one of those cases where one question turned into more questions that turned into more questions and so on. And it added up to be quite an interesting story, filled with misconceptions, contradictions and spaceships. Now the sad part is that I still don't know the answer to this question. But at least I might be able to clear some stuff up and maybe give some insight on what Sega developers were thinking when designing the Sonic 3 cartridge. And maybe even get you interested in knowing the answer yourself. So for me it started way before I knew anything about the technical aspects of save features in video games. For quite some time I just thought I didn't understand how the save feature worked. But eventually I understood that something was actually wrong with my cartridge. Now if you grew up playing video games in the 90s you probably learned about battery backup the hard way. So as I opened up my Sonic 3 cartridge to replace the battery, there was no battery. With the help of the internet I found that the component responsible for saving game progress was the one labeled Ramtron. I also found that this problem wasn't that uncommon. I was presented with different ways of fixing it. Someone made an adapter board to fit modern counterparts of the old discontinued component. Some figured out that not all memory banks were used. So by setting some registers using some pull up or pull down resistors, you could tell the memory to write to different memory banks, in the case it was the memory banks broken and not the whole component. I really like these solutions, they're clever and interesting and it makes it possible for these old cartridges to live on in a fully working order. I myself found some old stock of the original component and just replaced my broken one. So why did Sega choose this type of memory in the first place, when battery operated memories were well established in the video game industry when Sonic 3 Knuckles was developed? And what exactly is it? It is a ferroelectric random access memory, commonly referred to as FRAM or FERAM. I'm not going into detail on the physics of this memory technology in this video, but I will leave some links in the description in case you're interested in the physics of it. For this video we will focus on the pros and cons of this technology, which will hopefully give some clarity on why Sega chose this type of memory. Here are the pros of this technology. It's non-volatile, which means it does not lose saved data when the power is turned off, and it does not need a battery. You can plug in the Sonic 3 cartridge after 10 years and your save file should still be there. It is low power, very little current is needed to read or write the memory cells. It is radiation resistant, it is more or less impervious to electric fields in a practical sense. And the last point, which might seem a bit surprising, it is unaffected by magnetic fields. And so we arrive at our first misconception. This one is not really relevant for the story, but it's a pretty funny one. Fe, as in Fe RAM, refers to iron in the periodic table. But as opposed to some other types of memories, Fe RAM does not contain any iron. The reason it's named this way is because it behaves similarly to the magnetic core memory which was the predominant RAM technology in the 50s when the FE RAM technology was conceived. As a side note, another funny thing I found when researching this video was that the Wikipedia article about ferroelectric RAM says that the earliest known commercial product to use FE RAM is Sony's PlayStation 2 memory card, released in 2000, which is evidently off by about half a decade. Now let's look at the cons. It is relatively expensive and it has quite low memory density, which means that the storage capacity per size is relatively low. So based on this list we can draw the conclusion that Sega was willing to spend a little more on the memory to give us a more reliable experience than a battery backup memory would. So let's go back to the original question. Why did it break? The most common explanation I found was that the FE RAM has a destructive read process, which is true. And so we arrive at the second misconception. Destructive read cycles does not necessarily mean that the memory takes damage when reading data. When used to describe the operation of the memory, it means that reading a bit from a memory cell erases the data of that cell in the process. This is something that has to be accounted for in the implementation of the save feature and has nothing to do with the reliability of the technology. Now we arrive at my first contradiction. The FE RAM does actually take damage during the read and write process. As it is used, charge defect buildup occurs due to ion diffusion and other submolecular effects and will cause ferroelectric fatigue. 
which means that the charge difference between the 1 and the 0 state will eventually be too small to distinguish from one another. So why am I not satisfied with this explanation? The FE RAM breaks when using it, per design. So is it just a crappy design? Well, let's compare the read-write endurance from the FRAM in the Sonic 3 cartridge with modern flash memories. Flash memories seem to range from 1000 to 100,000 read-write cycles, with some types going all the way up to 1 million. Now let's look at the Ramtron FM1208S. This almost 30-year-old memory chip has a read-write endurance of 10 billion cycles. This means that you could save and load your game progress every second of every day for 300 years without wearing out the memory cells. This comparison can make you wonder why you can find so many scientific articles discussing, testing and analyzing FE RAM fatigue, when the read-write endurance is so high already. The reason is that the FE RAMs are used in extreme conditions where reliability is crucial, such as industrial control systems, medical devices and spacecrafts. So we arrive at our second contradiction of the story, the one I do not yet have a good explanation for. The main advantage of the FE RAM technology is its reliability. So why did it sometimes fail in the Sonic 3 cartridge? Could it be that Ramtron just made crappy implementations of an otherwise reliable technology? Well, Ramtron was a semiconductor company focused on specialized memory products with emphasis on quality control. FE RAMs was a large part of their offerings. In fact, in 1994, Ramtron owned the name FRAM. Given that Ramtron survived until the company was bought in 2012, I find it highly unlikely that they would produce low quality components. Could it be that the component is sensitive to mechanical shock and gets damaged as the cartridge is thrown around? Well, mechanical shock is part of the Ramtron quality testing and it's done according to the JEDEC standard number 26. I do not have this standard, nor do I know what it says, but it tells us that Ramtron is aware of how it responds to mechanical shock. And it seems highly unlikely that Sega, knowing their customers, would choose a component sensitive to rough handling. Could FRAM have been damaged due to improper handling in the cartridge production? It can be tricky to make sure that everything is happening according to specifications in the factory, but cartridge production was nothing new to Sega in 1994, and production tests would make sure that the faulty cartridges did not leave the factory. Now the FRAM chip was new to Sega and might have needed some special handling, but given how thorough Ramtron was with their own testing, Sega should have a good basis for writing proper instructions for production. The more I read into this, the more confused I get, as I get more convinced that the FRAM was a great technical choice for the application. Ramtron was acquired by Suppressed Semiconductor in 2012. I wrote an email to their Ramtron garbage collection email address hoping that someone would be willing to do some digging for the sake of peace of mind. Sadly, to no avail. As I'm trying to finalize this analysis, I realize that why Sega chose the FRAM is more of a mystery to me now than ever. And that itself might seem a bit contradictory as I just went on about what a great technical solution it was. But as I tried to see the big picture, it gets blurry again. Let's do a non-technical summary of this decision. When Sonic 3 was released, battery backup for home video games had been around for almost a decade. It had been used by Sega on many games up until this point. It would have been the safe bet. But Sega would never have gotten to where they were playing it safe. So they decided to introduce a new technology for saving game progress. Not new technology in the sense that it hadn't been used by the game industry before. New technology in the sense that it hadn't been used commercially at all before. For all I can find, Ramtron was the only company to produce commercially available ferroelectric RAM ships in 1994. Going through their FRAM lineup, the earliest published datasheet was for the FM1208S, the chip used in the Sonic 3 cartridge. And Sega decided to introduce this brand new technology for their absolute most important game release of the year, Sonic 3 Knuckles. So maybe this is where the answer lies. The principles of this technology had been known since the 50s, yet it took over 40 years of research to produce something commercially viable. Which means that in the mid 90s, when this technology finally became commercially available, it was brand new to the market. So even though FRAM is known as an extremely reliable type of memory, this was at its infancy. And when looking at it this way, it doesn't seem that surprising that it had some growing pains. So Sega decided to take a gamble on this new technology, and Sonic 3 and Knuckles went on to be one of the best-selling games for the Mega Drive or Genesis, with the Sonic 3 cartridge selling over 1 million copies in North America alone. 
Since this technology was only used in a few other games, aside from these games' individual success, the payoff for Sega was probably not that great in the long run. But maybe it was for the rest of the world. Let's speculate on the impact of Sega's decision. I can imagine a deal for a few million units from a single customer was a pretty important one financially for Ramtron, who had been doing non-revenue research for almost a decade and were just entering the market. But maybe more importantly, Sega brought this technology into the consumer market, and especially into the video game industry. Most noteworthy is probably the use of the MCU with integrated FE RAM technology in the Sony PlayStation 2 memory cards. Being the best selling console of all time at over 155 million units sold, it was no doubt a huge milestone for the FE RAM technology both financially and publicity wise. A technology that was on the verge of being deemed a pointless pursuit by IBM in the early 70s is now used in security devices, medical equipment, extraterrestrial communication and in-game technology way past the Sega Mega Drive era.